project, we're going to walk through building a lightweight Active Directory environment inside Google Cloud, what I like to call Mini AD. We have a Mini AD version for Azure and for AWS and now GCP. Google does offer a managed Microsoft AD service. It's powerful, highly available, and a great fit for production workloads. But it also comes with longer provisioning times, a higher cost, and a lot of overhead that doesn't always make sense if you need a lab environment or a quick proof of concept. That's where the Mini AD approach comes in. Using Terraform, the open source version of AD called Samba 4, automated scripts will deploy an Ubuntu-based VM that acts as both as a domain controller and a DNS server. Everything is designed to be fast, lightweight, and cost efficient. Perfect for spinning up a functional Active Directory environment in minutes, not an hour. As a part of this deployment, we'll also provision a Windows client VM and a Linux client VM, both of which automatically join the domain during boot. That means you'll see a fully integrated environment with authentication, group membership, and domain policies working end to end. On the networking side, we'll use a custom VPC with a private subnet. We'll lock things down with firewall rules and store all user credentials in Secrets Manager. Just to be clear, this solution is not meant for production use. It doesn't give you high availability, automated patches, or seamless integration with other services that are that is provided with Google's managed AD service. But if your goal is to prototype workloads, build a demo, or get hands-on practice with Active Directory and GCP, this is the fastest and cheapest way to get there. Okay, now let's take a look at the architecture diagram for what we're going to build. It's pretty simple. Mantra for GCP is to keep things simple, simple, and we're doing that here. So we have one VPC and one subnet in it. And in that, the first thing we're going to do is deploy the mycloud.com mini directory, which is that Ubuntu server we're talking about that we're running some before. Then after that is deployed, we're going to end up deploying a Windows AD instance that's going to join at boot to that instance. And Linux AD instance also going to join into that directory at boot. And then we provision a series of accounts for testing. So the Windows AD, we're going to be able, uh, the Windows AD instance will be able to remote desktop to that and use any of these credentials to log in. Same with the Linux AD instance. So you can SSH to any of those instances. Okay, so now let's talk about the limitations of mini uh, AD. There's really two buckets to this. The first bucket is platform as a service versus infrastructure as a service. Uh, which would be the same, you'd have the same issues if you were self-hosting a Windows version of AD uh, as a VM. And then the second one is the sort of the functional gaps of running the open source version of AD Samba 4, it, the gaps that it provides, or that, those limitations that it provides. So as far as platform as a service for infrastructure service, it's what you would expect. High availability when we have one instance, so it's not highly available. We're not configuring backups and snapshots. It's for lab. You'd have to do that manually, whereas the service gives it for you for free. Automatic patching. Um, we're not doing that. The service gives it for free. Security hardening and compliance. It's got uh, various things you need to follow and how it provisions the admin password. We don't get any of that. And of course, 24-7 Google support. You're, you're not going to get any of that. Um, so it's, it's really, these are the platform, the service versus infrastructure service differences. So let's go back to the, the functional gaps. So if you want to integrate into existing services and in, inside of GCP, some of them work, some of them don't work, but you can just effectively say it's not going to be push button like it is with the managed AD services. So any integration with managed AD, it might work, it may not work, but it's, it's, it's not guaranteed. Then we've got group policy objects. They work a little bit differently in uh, GCP or mini AD. Um, normally, the basics are covered, but if you're doing advanced GCP, uh, GPO things with many AD and GCP, it's not going to work. Some of the PowerShell commandlets work a little bit differently with many AD, but and, and if you're going to do trusts, like one-way or two-way trusts, you're going to want to use the managed AD. Okay, now let's go over the prerequisites. Uh, up there, I'll put the video link for GCP and e Terraform Easy Setup. Uh, that video walks through a very simple GCP project, shows you how to create the build identity in the GCP console, and then how to plug it into our builds. So there's really three things you need. You need that Google Cloud account, and you have to create the build identity. You can follow that video for instructions there. You need the G Cloud CLI, and then finally, you need Terraform. Okay, now let's build the code. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to download this repository link and copy these git commands. And I'm going to open my development environment and I'm going to paste that in. 
And so it, it's downloaded the code, switched directories. So the first thing we want to do is run the check ENV script to make sure that we have everything set up to do the build. And it's going to say, hey, you don't have credentials.json. Credentials.json, if you go to that video about how you set up a GCP build, build it's, it's the uh, file that allows you to connect to GCP. So what I need to do is go into my project, and I'm going to upload from my laptop credentials.json. And now, after it's uploaded, I'm going to do check ENV, and it's going to say, all right, you've got that set up. So the next thing that's GCP specific is you want to run API setup, and that will enable all the APIs you need for the build. So we have done the check ENV, we've done the API setup, now it's time to run the build. So I'm run apply. Now the build takes approximately five minutes, it's pretty quick. If you have any questions about this video or the builds, please feel free to put the questions in the, in the comment section. Okay, the build has completed. So what we want to do here is go into the Google Cloud Console and take a look at what got built. So I'm bring up the Google Cloud Console. And most of everything in this project is built in the VM section of it. So I'll do VM instances. And you'll see I've got the mini ADM Cloud. I've got the Linux AD instance and I've got the Windows AD instance. So let's go to the Google Cloud one. And I'm going to SSH to it. Okay, so once I'm in, what I want to do is I want to elevate to root, and I'll go to uh, the root directory. And this is where it will show you all the details about the Active Directory uh, domain controller. We've got the basic information here, the domain name, the NetBIOS name, and then a couple of, uh, of checks you can do. Then you can look at RAD group attributes and that's the groups that we created at the beginning it comes from a json file i am going to set the ad user attributes and you can see that we assign those three users and then if you look at seed users.json that is the list of users that get created when the instance gets created and so you want to do a couple users there because it gets injected into the metadata script so you can't like do thousands of users but you can just do a handful of users that get seeded on boot Okay, so now let's look at the other two instances. You've got uh, the Linux AD instance, which is in US Central. Um, it is public. It's using ET Medium, uh, which is a relatively small um, version. Then we've got the same thing with Windows. We use the ET standard to it. We need a little bit more for Windows. So both of these two instances are going to be joined to Active Directory. We are going to demonstrate in the demo uh, logging into them with RGP and SSH and be able to see what the users that are created and we'll log in as multiple users. So that's it for the VMs. So let's go to um, VPC networking. And it's pretty simple. We've got the one VPC. I just wanted to point out the to cut the forwarder. So if I go to DNS configuration, we've got a forwarder, the mCloud forward zone. We've, we, when we build the mini AD, we inject this into it and basically says in this DNS, if you come through with my mcloud.mycloud.com, you need to forward it to this server here, which is the mini AD server acting as a DNS server in this situation. Okay, so that's it for the VPC and the forwarding to mcloud.com. And so the last thing is go to Secrets Manager. And you can see these are all the credentials that get created. So the first one we're going to use is going to be AD to log into. So maybe you secret value, you'll see it's it's generated here. These are generated for every build. And we've got the same thing from all that. So what I'll do is I'll leave this up because in the demo, we're going to go back and forth to this to get our credentials to log in. Okay, now let's log into the Windows instance using AD credentials. So the first thing we're going to do is go back to the VM instances, grab the IP address of the Windows instance, the public one, the external IP, remote desktop connection client, put it in there, and it's going to come through, and it's going to say, okay, who do you want to log into? So I'm going to log, log into is mcloud admin, uh, so mcloud 
admin, and then go back to our secret manager. We get a uh, view secret value, copy this here. Go back to the client, put that in. And the first time you log in, it may take a bit, but I'm, I'm logged in. And so what I'm going to do is look at a couple of things on this instance. The first thing is I'm going to go to in Windows Administrative Tools, bring this up. And this is where I've installed when in the boots, in addition to joining the domain, I've installed all the, all the uh, snap-ins for managing Active Directory. So we'll look at the first one, which is the Active Directory's users and computers. This is where you would manage your users. So if you want to extend this demo and you want to add more users and groups and whatnot, you can use this interface. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view and say advanced features because we're going to look at some attributes of the specific users. So if I click on uh, users, you can see here are all the sample users and groups. There's four sample users and four groups. So let's first talk about the groups. When you're sharing between Linux and uh, Windows, there are specific attributes you need to set on groups for them to show up properly on the Linux side. So let's look at mCloud users. And if I look at attribute editor, the thing that must be set is GID number. So GID number is 10,001. Now you have to figure out your, your naming scheme. I, I started with 10,001, but there's many ways of doing this. You need to set that GID number. So that's step one. So the groups will now show up. The second is on my users. Let's go to Raj Patel. There's three things you need to set for it to properly behave on Linux. The first one is the GID number. That's basically saying what your primary Unix group is going to be. And so that is uh, GID number 10,001. That corresponds to the mCloud users group we just saw. And so at the bottom here, we also have UID and UID number. So UID number is uh, also similar to GID number. It has to be unique per users. So it's 10,003, so that's the UID number. And then UID name is your user login, your, your SAM account name. But all three have to be set for these to be users to be properly presented on the Linux side. Okay, so let's take one last thing before we log in as another user. Let's go into computers here. Let's do my PCs, properties, and look at remote desktop, remote desktop, select users who may access this PC. You'll see it's set to mCloud users. So anybody in the mCloud user should be able to log in as this. So what we're gonna do is let's log in as John Smith. I'm gonna click on this to log in again. And so now we wanna change our user to mCloud John Smith. And I'm gonna back in here. I'm gonna copy this guy right here. Copy, go back to the login. Put in J Smith, hit OK, and you can see it's now logging in as John Smith. OK, I'm logging in as John Smith. Let's go back to Administrative Tools. I can still see Active Directory users and groups, but uh, what you'll see is there's no new here. I can only see it. It's read only. Uh, the other thing too is let's do a PowerShell just to show you that it's directory is C users J Smith. So we've logged in as John Smith. Um, you can do the other three as well. They're all remote desktop users. But at this point, we're done with the Windows side. So we're going to log out. So sign out. Okay, now let's take a look at the Linux instance. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to use the the native SSM SSH client in the console. So I'm gonna click on the Linux instance. I'm gonna click on this. Okay, so now we're on the Linux side. We're, we, who am I? I believe we are uh, the cloud user. So it's not one of those users, it's not an ID entity. But what I can do is I can say ID, uh, we just did Jeff Smith, so Jay Smith. And you can see all those users and groups that are there. Like if I do git ent group mcloud users, you can see the, the numbers that we talked about before is clearly there. You can see ID John Smith. Um, you've got GID, UID number, then you have the members. Now, John Smith is also a member of Linux Admin. So if I do get ENT group Linux admins, you can see Raj Patel and John Smith are both Linux admins. So that's it for the, the default shell. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Cloud Shell to log into the other two. So let me go back into here. 
and fire up my cloud shell. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to SSH R Patel at, and let's go pick up this guy right here. Paste. Now we got to go back to our permissions and let's find uh, Raj Patel. Do view get secret value. Be that. Go back to Cloud Shell. Paste. And now you can see we are logged in. So who am I? I'm Raj Patel. So ID R Patel. Get ENT group and cloud users. And probably the most important thing, since I'm a member of Linux admins, I should be able to do sudo bash root. So you can see those users that we created in AD, our mini AD, are presented on the Linux side as long as you have those UID, GID, UID values set. If you don't have those set, for instance, the admin user is not set. So if I do ID admin, it's going to say, I don't know. So unless those attributes are set, that they're not presented to the Linux side. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the demo. So let me dismiss here. Um, at this point, you wanna be good stewards of your, your cloud account. Now it's a little cheaper now, so you can let this running for a little bit longer. That's one of the advantages is you can have your mini day up and mini AD up for a week, and it's only gonna cost you 10, $15 instead of um, much more with the managed AD services. So that's it for this. We're gonna to go to our Bluetooth development environment. And I'm going to run destroy. And destroy also takes about five minutes. So it's, it's pretty symmetrical.